Hi everyone, welcome to Gnan Cloud Garage. In this session, I'm going to talk about the hardening process. So here is the quick agenda. So first I will explain you the hardening process, best practices for security hardening, hardening practices, and finally hardening outcomes. So before jump into the hardening process, as we are aware, every organization, their IT infrastructure can be on a edge location or on premises, or it can be on a cloud. Even when it comes to the cloud, it can be a private cloud, public cloud, or it can be a hybrid cloud environment. So uh, within this hardening process and uh, some of the examples, I am taking the examples of VMware. Okay, because the concept is same for any of the IT infrastructure, whether it can be a on-premises, cloud environment, or edge locations. And before jumping to the hardening, as we are aware, every IT infrastructure have a certain qualities, like every organization before the day zero, during the day zero initial design, solution design itself, they maintain infrastructure qualities. In, these qualities includes availability, manageability, performance, recoverability, and last but not the least, another infrastructure quality item is security. So within your security, the key concept within the under security tower is hardening process. Okay. And why we need to learn about the hardening processes as we aware, every day there is a new cyber threats evolving in the industry. So cyber attackers and threat actors target data everywhere. Everywhere means edge location, on-premises or cloud all the time. So in order to address this, organization must follow certain hardening practices so that we'll achieve, we can able to overcome the cyber attack, attacks and data breaches. Okay, and first, understanding the hardening process, let me explain you what is the meaning of hardening. In the context of information technology and cybersecurity, hardening refers to the process of securing a computer system. Computer system means it can be a workstation or it can be a server. Even server means either physical server or virtual machine. Okay, and also network devices. Network devices means it includes switches, routers, firewalls, load balancer, and other networking devices, and also software application. This software application can be run on physical server like monolithic, or it can be run on a tier-based applications on virtual machines, or it can be running on a containerized environment. So wherever it is running, so all these components like system, network, and application, and also the storage, by reducing its vulnerabilities and minimizing potential attack surfaces. That is the main definition of hard hardening. In addition, hardening involves configuring and strengthening the system's security settings and policies to make it more resistant to unauthorized access, cyber attacks, and other security threats. Okay, so let's un try to understand the hardening process. So within this hardening process, there is a high level process to help achieve the desired future state. So it includes six steps. Let's start with the step one. So determine scope and identify a risk. So review the security policies, standards, and architecture. As I mentioned, the day zero itself, we should maintain some process, okay? So during the our day zero architecture design itself, we should maintain the security standards. So these standards can be, it may be very depends on the organization security regulations. Some may maintain CAS benchmarks, some may use NIST, some may use PCA, and also some may use GDPR and so on, okay? And develop a security plan. So set the standard for baseline configuration aligned to a cyber security framework, okay? 
and implement security controls. So implement configuration and security control and test the performance to ensure validity. So security control means one example is setting a strong password policies and encrypting our virtual machine data. Either we can use virtual machine native encryption feature or we can use any of the external KMS servers. And we can also apply some security policies. And fourth step is monitor and assess security. So ensure compliance with the continuous third party monitoring and periodic assessments. In general, for monitoring, we have plenty of third party tools you can use depends on the your organization standard. One example is SolarWinds NPM, Network Performance Monitor. Suppose if you consider a VMware monitoring tool that is v realize automation v realize operations sorry previously we call it as v realize operations manager but recently the product name is changed to aria operations so using op aria operations also we can able to manage our entire it infrastructure it includes servers network and storage devices and we can also do the periodic assessments and when it comes to the step five maintain and update controls so here is update control also plays a key role so that means keep software up to date remain vigilant for new vulnerabilities and threats so software up to date means it has to cover all our infrastructure layers that means our hardware must be latest to firmware and our ESX should be running with the latest patch. And similarly, OS operating system also, we should maintain the monthly patches up to date. Like Microsoft releases every month, second Tuesday, that patches also we have to update. Similarly, Linux also we have to use that. Whenever the Red Hat release the latest patches, we, have, we make sure that it should be up to date patch level. And for the patching, every organization, they may use some centralized tools. For example, Microsoft patching, we can use system center configuration manager and for red hat we may use red hat satellite server and some scenarios we may also use other third party tools like ibm big fix to maintain the patching to maintain the software all the software should be up to date level okay and last but not the least follow up so monitor the infrastructure continuously over time for effectiveness and to review each time it changes okay this is a completely a continuous process Okay, hope you understand the hardening high level process. Now, let me explain you the best practices for security hardening. As we know, security is one of our main infrastructure quality. Within the security, the key concept is security hardening. So under security hardening, we can get disable unnecessary services. So within our operating system, either Windows, Linux, or ESX. One example in the ESX is, normally in the production environment, it has recommend to disable SSH service and also SNMP service. Whenever necessary, then only enable and for a certain period and again disable. That is the organization standards. And apply security patches. Even security patches, usually every organization, they maintain a monthly patching. Even the monthly patching process also, most common process is, first they will apply the security patch on a test servers. And the following week, uh, once the test is completed, the, upon the uh, successful test results, they will apply the patches on your production servers. Some may maintain a one week gap, some organization may maintain two weeks gap, some may maintain a three weeks gap. It depends on the organization security regulations. And configure host-based firewalls. So host-based firewalls, it can be on VM level and also application layer, it can be on a physical layer. All the layers, we should maintain a firewalls. And network hardening. This is a, another best practices. Under network hardening, configure network devices and configure and implement virtual LANs, access control list in short form ACL and network segmentation. Suppose when it comes to the VMware, we go for network segmentation, we maintain a VMware NSX product, okay? And another one, virtual machine hardening. So virtual machine, suppose if our infrastructure is VMware, configure virtual machines running on VMware infrastructure, apply security patches to VMs and disable unnecessary services 
generally uh, vmware recommendation for the hardening perspective it will try to avoid the virtual machine console access in your production environment we have to access only through either rdp access for windows servers and for the linux servers we can access through ssh prompt okay and configure firewalls on virtual machines and even the it depends on the guest operating system most commonly used operating systems are windows linux solaris and also other linux flavored operating systems and also ovf format oss also that means pre configured operating systems like photon and access control so implement another best practice implement access controls to limit access for vmware infrastructure to authorized users so within our vcenter we have a different types of roles normally only the except the vspa administrators we maintain administrator role and for all the tenants and application users we have to prepare a separate user accounts and with limited privileges we will not provide a full admin per permissions okay so role access access control strong authentication on mechanisms and the least privilege access and another best practice is encryption so implement ssl tls encryption for network traffic and encrypt virtual machine disk and virtual hard disk and monitoring and logging so implement monitoring and logging mechanisms implement ids ips and advanced threat protection in short form atp and implement security information and event management in short form siem tools okay so every automation they have their some vulnerability assessment tools and also the security scanning tools are in place okay and some also maintain a weekly and monthly antivirus scanning tools also to detect the any of the viruses within our organization okay and now another key point is i'm going to talk about hardening practices and hardening outcomes so implementing security best practices to harden our infrastructure hardening outcome reduce the potential for cyber attacks and data breaches okay it's a straight away statement and hardening practices so secure vmware infrastructure by implementing best practices aligned to an industry recognized cyber security framework so it can be a nest or pca or cas benchmarks okay and the suggested frequency during initial implementation and throughout the system life cycle until end of life decommissioning okay and hardening outcomes so improved access controls that is one and another one strengthened the network security and reduced attack surfaces correct and better performance and also simplified compliance so last but not the least when we follow all these hardening security best practices another key thing is organizations often perform regular security audits some companies they may maintain security audits for monthly basis or quarterly basis or half yearly or annually some organization may have annual security audits in short form asc so as per the security audits and assessment to ensure that their systems remained hardened against evolving threats okay hope you understand the hardening process and what is the hardening best practices and hardening practices and hardening outcomes okay and even if you want to know about how to implement the hardening on vmware products just in the google you can just type vmware hardening guides you will find here all vmware product there is a different hardening guide for example vspear we have a separate hardening guide and for the nsx separate hardening guide vcf we have separate hardening guide for every vmware product there is a separate hardening guide we have to implement in the production environment generally it must be implement on day one itself during the implementation scenario okay so in the next session i will talk about the most commonly used vspear hardening checklist okay so that's it thank you if you are watching this video first time please do view like share and subscribe to the gnan cloud garage channel if you are already subscribe i appreciate all your support bye for now